Hi, my name is Joe Ryan, and today I'm going to be introducing you to Flip, a fun, simple, competitive puzzle game that I'm going to be entering into the Indie Bits game competition. So, Flip is a game that's meant for two to six players. It takes about five to 15 minutes to play, and it's appropriate for players ages 10 and up. So let's go over the simple components of the game. So Flip is a game played exclusively with cards. In the game, each player will get one deck of one color of cards. Inside the deck, there are 16 cards, and each card has a different combination of arrows and symbols on it. Also included in the game are these other cards that we call bonus cards. We'll go over how those work later on as we do an example of the game. Let's talk about some of the cards that are in the decks so that we know how the game actually functions. I'm going to use the red deck as an example. As you see that we lay out here, each of these cards will have a different combination of arrows and symbols on them. So let's go over what these mean. If when you place your card onto the table and an arrow is facing an adjacent card, then that card is going to flip over. And you'll see this more as we demonstrate the game in just a moment. That's the only effect of a card with no symbol. Now as we move on down the line, you'll see that the next symbol on one of these cards is a lock. Now what that means is that once this card is played and it flips over the card next to it, that card is now locked in place as long as this card is facing it. No other cards can flip that card or move it in any way until this lock has been removed by flipping this card over. Next, we go to our double card. Now our double card means that for every arrow that's facing on this card, we're going to flip over the next two cards instead of just the adjacent cards. So as you can see on this one, there are three arrows, so we would flip over the cards that would be here and here, the cards here and here, and also the cards here and here based on the ability of that card. Finally, we have the chain card. Now our chain card is the most complicated card, but the mechanics themselves aren't really too difficult. The way the chain card works is that if I place this card down on a next to a card that is already flipped over, when the card flips it over, this card reactivates as if it had just been played from a player's hand. So for example, if I were to flip this card using a regular card, when it flips, nothing extra is going to happen. It's just going to flip over, resulting in a point for the red player. However, if I flip this card over using the chain card, now when I flip it, it's going to activate as if I just played it, which means again, this card would flip these two cards, these two cards, and these two cards on the table. This is the basis of the game. The goal is at the end of the game, having the most cards face up on the board in comparison to all of your opponents. So let's quickly run through what a sample test of the game looks like, and then I'll let you go play it for yourselves. We're going to start with just two players, and so in this situation we're going to use the red and the blue deck. We won't play the full game because the full game with two players would take approximately 5 to 15 minutes, but I'll go through the first couple of moves in the game and explain how some of the mechanics work. The first step would be that each player is going to draw a number of cards specified in the rules. In these, what that means is that in a two-player game, you're each going to have 12 cards as you start the game. The game will be started by placing one bonus card in the center of the table. As the players place cards next to adjacent cards, the spaces will fill up. And in a two-player game, we're going to be ending up playing to a five by five grid with these cards, which means that as they get placed, once there are five cards in one dimension or five cards in the other dimension, no more cards can be placed outside of those. So, let's say that the red player goes first. And the red player plays a card from their hand, and that card might be this red card here. Now when I place that, what that means is it's going to flip this bonus card over. Now, when I flip the bonus card to the black side, what that means is that any card that it's facing using its arrow is going to lose a point at the end of the game when the scores are tallied. So as the red player, I don't want that facing my card, so I'm going to leave it facing the opposite direction for now. Now if I'm the blue player, I'm going to see an opportunity here, and I have this times two card in my hand. So the way I can use this times two card in this situation, I can place that times two card here. Or actually, for better purposes for me, I'm going to place it here. 
Now what that's gonna let me do is turn this bonus card over. And when I turn over a card, I can orient it in whichever way that I want. So in this situation, I'm gonna orient this card back towards me, which is going to give me a bonus point in scoring. And I'm gonna flip the red player's card over, leaving it in place where it was. Now as the red player, I'm going to get to play another card. So what I'm gonna use now is a demonstration of the chain ability. Now we talked about the chain ability before, and we'll see how that's gonna work now. So when I place this card here, that means I'm gonna flip over my red card back to face up. However, since it's a chain, that means that this card is going to now be activated. So if this card is activated, I get to choose how to orient it, but it's gotta be played in the same space. So I'll play it here, and what that's gonna allow me to do is flip this card back over to the black side, and I'm gonna keep it pointing at that blue player's card. Now, I as the red player have two cards face up and I'm giving the blue player a negative point, which is a great move for me. Now, as I'm the blue player, it's my turn. So what I'm gonna do here is play a card with a locking mechanism on it. So the way this is gonna work is I'm gonna play this card here and what that's gonna do is gonna allow me to flip the two cards because obviously these arrows point to those and after I flip these two cards, it means that they're going to be locked in place. So I'm gonna flip this one back over to that white side and I'm gonna keep it pointing at my card, orienting it this way. Now, these cards are locked in place. I've given myself a bonus point here and now what I've protected myself from is that if I'm the red player and I'm going to play a card down, the red player cannot change the position of this card or this card with their cards because they're locked in place. Now the red player has a trick up his sleeve. Using a double card, what the red player can do is affect multiple cards. And so in this situation, the red player is going to unlock these other cards by flipping over this blue card first, and then also flip over this card because now it has been unlocked. Now this card is flipping over to the black side, the red player will face it towards the blue player's card, and now the blue player is losing a point. All of these moves are going to continue until this game board has filled up to five by five on the board. And once all 25 cards have been played, the game is over. Players will count the number of their cards that are face up to see who has the best final score using the bonus tile as a way to score a tiebreaker or to award bonus points. The rules have a little bit more depth to them, and there are lots of variants in gameplay, but I won't get into all of those in this video. What I'd like you to do is go try the game for yourself. There's a print and play version of the game attached to the entry, so hopefully you'll find that and go give it a shot. Thanks for watching, and I hope you guys enjoy Flip.